Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and it's time for me to tell you about the BCN Sigma R17. This is going to be my review of the BCN Sigma R17. And of course, this is based solely on my personal experience and my very own opinions of this printer, the software, and exactly all of the stuff that I've been printing with it. I have in no way been compensated for my opinions on this printer, and everything you hear is straight from my mind nowhere else. I do have to mention that it was Matter Hackers that got me this printer via BCN 3D in Barcelona, and I, I wanna thank them for giving me, and BCN for giving me, the opportunity to give this printer a test drive. Before we get into all of this stuff that's in front of me, let me tell you about the machine. The BCN 3D Sigma R17 is an FDM machine with two extruders and a build volume of 210 by 297 by 210. It comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. However, the BCN hot end family allows you to add in a 0.3, a 0.5, a 0.6, a 0.8, and a 1.0 millimeter nozzle. You can print tethered via USB or you can copy G code files to the SD card. It's running a BCN 3D flavor of Marlin. The layer height you get is going to depend on the size of the nozzle you put in the machine. It's got an extruder maximum printing temperature of 280 degrees centigrade and the heated build plate will go up to a maximum of 100 degrees centigrade. All right, I told you a little bit about the printer, at least the specs. I'm going to turn it off now just in case the fan noise is giving a hum. Mm. In the box, as you remember from the unboxing, were two different PLAs. This is the Colorfila gray PLA and there's a Colorfila white PLA. Uh, Matter Hackers did include a blue PLA originally to test with the machine along with the PVA for supports. However, I was having issues with the blue PLA, so they sent me that awesome green PLA, which printed just fine. Let's talk about my first prints off this machine. Uh, I did a dual color Benchy and I did a dual color Marvin. Both of these turned out extremely well. The Benchy did have some issues on the underside and the the, well, the Marvin looked like Marvin and as well as Marvin can look. I was really impressed with the way there was no color bleed and I thought that the independent dual extruders did a fantastic job making these two models. The blue PLA from Matter Hackers did print fine on these maker coins I was making and of course I did print this giant maker coin. But the reason I switched away from it is because I had to push the temperature on the PLA to 235 to 240. Something just wasn't right. And I tried it in both extruders and it was experiencing the same thing. So I still need to try that on another machine. And that's why I did get the green and the green performed extremely well. One of the first things I did with the green is mix it with the white and make this dual color octopus. And it is freaking awesome. Look at that thing. The lights of the Sigma were illuminating the green. This It goes along well with the white. It's, it's an incredible model, and these two colors together make it just look stellar. The print quality is beyond awesome. I, there's nothing wrong with this model at all. The Sigma did a fantastic job. I did slice this with Simplify 3D, and I used their dual extrusion wizard to make this. Speaking of that octopus, I did another one, but instead of the green, I used the PVA support material from Matter Hackers as an internal structure to make this octopus, which has nothing inside of it. it you could consider it uh, without a green brain, I guess. The model turned out wonderful, and the PVA itself melted away just fine. And let's talk about that PVA material. So this is this is PVA material right here, and this is from Matter Hackers. The, the PVA was wonderful. In fact, I printed out this Tron bike, and it, it turned out great. It was printed in this orientation, and there was support material all around it. So the only part of the model that was touching the build plate was the very back of this futuristic tire. But with this PVA is an example of one of the things that I just don't like about this printer. This is the PVA support, this spongy lattice work of awesomeness. And it was easy enough to take off of this model and then I melted it away in a bucket of water after a few minutes, which was great. However, inside the little buckets for each extruder was this material. And this is the purge off of the dual extruders. One of the things that BCN does different than other machines is that each, well, is that each of these print heads, as they move and do things, they go over this 
flexible material barrier and inside this bucket right here is where it purges the nozzle each time it does a layer change. As you can see, the buckets themselves, they aren't the largest and the, the purge amount can be incredible. Look at this. This is nearly as much material as this. It feels like this is definitely more material than what would happen if you were to have um, a wipe tower or a purge tower. So speaking about these buckets and purging, each time it does a layer change, there is a purge amount coming out of the nozzle that gets stored in each of those buckets. Those buckets, I firmly believe, are undersized for the amount of purge that happens and for the volume that this printer is able to print with. And that means you have to clean these buckets mid print job. And that either is you reaching into a bucket while that head is currently printing or pausing the print and removing the bucket and then dumping it out, putting it back in and resuming the print, which by no means would I recommend. I found that using needle nose pliers and dipping in and taking out the, the purged material seemed to work just fine. If you don't do this on a large print, you run the risk of two things. One, having the material stick to the nozzle, find its way over the flexible material that the nozzle wipes on and onto your print, and that can ruin your print. I did not experience that in the R17, whereas I did in the previous model. However, that's not to say that the possibility is not there. The other thing that happens is, and this, this is gonna happen, it's going to make a mess. This printer makes more of a mess than any of the many printers that I've used personally. The bottom of this printer is, uh, is a plastic and it's littered with filament droppings. It's not that hard to clean up, but I have to tell you, this, this printer messes itself. On the bottom of the printer, that plastic that I was telling you about isn't in one solid piece. There's a piece in the middle that's attached via screws on the four corners. The reason you see blue painter's tape is because when the printer heads are moving very quickly in a short amount of space, it vibrates the internals of this machine. The machine itself is solid and the vibrations don't really transfer outside of the machine, but because the plastic on the bottom is only attached in the four corners, in the middle parts of the plastic, it will vibrate up and down and cause some noise. There's also noise when this printer is printing by these filament buckets. The buckets themselves are metal, but they're not connected all the way around. And on one corner, there's a piece of metal that slides into another piece, but it's not a firm connection, and it rattles. And it just rattles and it rattles. It's a little annoying, and I don't know the reason why that BCN chose to make their filament catch boxes in this manner, but they, they work. Uh, again, like I said, I don't think they're large enough, and they shake like a baby rattle if the printer's doing its job. As I talk about things, just, to, just so I remember that I talked about them, I try to move them up front. I did attempt a print in place wrench by Daniel Noray and uh, it printed just fine. It also worked just fine. The bed is glass and uh, PLA when it's set to what 55, 60 degrees is going to stick to it just fine. Other materials need a little bit more heat. Other materials beyond that need some help. I found that the Elmer's glue stick just worked fine for nearly every material I threw on the, the printer. Uh, I did have some wolf bite still from uh, Ben over at Hawk 3D Proto. He sent some of this to me and I found this to work just stellar. Plus, when you painted it on the build plate, the build plate itself maintained its clear appearance, but everything still stuck to it. So whether uh, you've got glue stick, wolf bite, I did hear some people using hairspray. I did hear of 3D lac being good on the printer. It seems that this glass build plate takes everything, works just fine. One of the cool things about this printer's glass build plate it's held on by magnets. There's three magnets that hold it on. Those magnets are embedded into the glass. And this means you can take it off to clean the adhesion material you've used, or you can take it off to then add material or maybe spray it down with some hairspray and then put it into the printer. That keeps things a little bit cleaner. I even put it back in the printer from the side. That's kind of cool. The printer does some pretty cool things with software, and one of them is an automated atomic pull. The printer comes with this baggie of 2.85 millimeter nylon, and this isn't to print with. 
This is to clear nozzle and hot end jams. The printer's firmware has this atomic pull method automatically baked in, and it will tell you if you do have a jam, you can still pull some filament out. It'll heat it up to a certain temperature. You put the nylon in, it then cools it down, heats it up to a lower temperature, and it tells you using needle nose pliers to put some pressure on it and pull it out. And the idea is the nylon grips on to whatever is clogging that nozzle. You then say if it worked or not. And if it didn't work, it just leads you through doing it again until you can get a clean nylon pull. I found that to be a fantastic addition to the printer, especially if someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with 3D printers or is knowledgeable about clearing jams in a 3D printer, it's really hard to explain to someone the, the atomic pull method. For them to be able to implement this in software and to lead the user through doing it, A plus to you, BCN 3D. So now we're talking about the printer software and I think that's one of the low points of this machine. BCN 3D did a fantastic job making the Marlin Bay software for this machine. Uh, I think that it does have some shortcomings. The touch screen is nice. It is very responsive, but I don't think they've implemented the touching mechanism very well. It feels uh, jittery. It feels wonky when you touch things on the touch screen. And I also found that the software itself would get confused when attempting to read from the SD card at times. If I, would just, uh, if I was printing and I was taking the SD card in and out, every third or fourth time I would do that, uh, I would have to power cycle a printer in order for it to properly read the SD card. The firmware is good, and I think they've done a phenomenal job getting it to where it's at, but now it's time to put in that effort to fix the problems and to add in more functionality that gives you greater control over the printer. So I told you I was taking the SD card in and out. Uh, the reason I was doing that is because I was iterating on a design for a fidget spinner. Uh, you can see I've got my, my, my three weight, my five weight. I even got this, this double right here where it has two bearings in the middle. Uh, I'm gonna do a tutorial on this one that's using three, three quarter inch nuts on the, uh, on the outside arms in order to create the weight. I did find this printer to be very capable of being an iterative design tool. I did attempt some flexibles and uh, I did one flat little dolphin emoji. That was a, that was a, a flexible uh, print. I was, I was using the Recreus Filiflex and I did finally get a Benchy. Look at that, it's, it's, a, it's a Benchy. I used way too much infill on this, but, but I did get the Benchy printed. And uh, you can tell I went through quite uh, a few <laughs> iterations of trying different settings, different uh, extrusion widths, different speeds and, and stuff like that. But I was able to get a Benchy printed. I did try to translate that into a dual material print, much like what Bill over at Punished Props did. However, I didn't experience the same success that he did, and I believe I'm just a few settings away from getting this sort of thing to work. This is, of course, my dual color maker coin, thanks to Maker's Muse, but the letters were rigid, and the rest of it was flexible, and it didn't bond fully, and I think if I follow the advice that uh, Bill gave me in his video, I should be able to get a successful Multiple, multiple material maker coin. Wow, that's a lot to say. BCN has a website called Progen that lets you say which hot ends you have and which materials you want, and it will generate a profile for Cura or for Simplify 3D. And I used that to generate a profile to make this maker coin at a 0 0.06 millimeter layer height, and it came out great. This is of the two PLAs that were included with the BCN Sigma, and this was using their Progen site to create that profile and print this, and it worked just as I expected. Finally, look at this. I, I like this, this is cool. This was printed in the white color Fila PLA, and these were printed in the Matter Hackers green, and these are drawers. And it's a very uh, Dr. Seuss, uh, Whoville inspired design. Uh, it came out, it came out wonderful. Everything stuck to the build plate, everything uh, printed just as it should. And it's, this is a very high quality print. I like this a lot. Look at that, I've got nothing else left in front of me. So I think it's time we wrap this up. This printer is a wonderful, absolutely wonderful hardware platform. I think 
BCN 3D has done an amazing job at putting together a 3D printer. They're using linear rails on the X and Y axes, and the way that the independent extruders work is just, it's phenomenal to watch. It's almost like watching magic happen in front of your eyes. The purge buckets are an issue, but the purging itself is a software issue, and that can easily be corrected. In fact, the touchscreen itself has issues, but again, it's a software issue and that can be easily corrected in future versions. And that, my friends, is where it leaves us. BCN 3D has created quite possibly one of the best currently on the market hardware platforms for 3D printing. However, it's suffering at its software. The firmware itself is buggy and requires reboots of the machine in order to work at times. I think right now the proper and right choice in software slicing for this machine is Simplify 3D. I think that you then get more control over temperatures and independent control of the uh, extruders themselves. I know BCN is trying to update Cura and it'll catch up at some point, but right now I think that you need to use Simplify 3D. It's a complicated process. The independent nozzles themselves aren't the complexity handed down to the user, it's just dual extrusion in general. And Simplify 3D has a dual extrusion wizard which makes it sort of easy, but dual extrusion with multiple materials is still a bit of an advanced process. I mean, I could load PLA into each side and I could probably lead my mom through being able to print something like like the octopus or like these uh, like this chest of drawers or that droughty lizard thingy over there. But beyond that, this isn't something that a novice person or a first time user is most likely going to get right away. And that's where I conclude on this. This hardware platform is wonderful. It needs some tweaks on the software side. And I don't think this is a good machine for a first time 3D printing user. But if you're someone like me, or someone like other enthusiasts who have more than one machine, or you're very capable in the process of, of getting 3D printers to work, or you've, you've done this all before, or the independent extruders really get you excited and you just wanna get your hands on this because you've done other things and now this is something new in 3D printing you wanna get a hold of, this is the machine for you. This is going to make you happy. This is going to produce incredible prints this is going to be the the goodness. <laughs> this is going to be the goodness, you guys. I, this sucks, right? I hate having to, to put limitations on things. I want to spread 3D printing to the world, to everybody, to young and old. And it's just, this isn't the machine. Not yet. It's a fantastic machine. It works when you know what you're doing. But if this probably shouldn't be your first machine. Cut your teeth on something else and then upgrade. All right. You know what? I hope that all makes sense. This is my official opinion of the Sigma. I love this machine, but at the same time, I have a lot of experience in 3D printing and 3D printers, and I, I, I know how to make it work right. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know, but if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I, I'd love to see what you think of this machine or, or of this review. If you, uh, if you have any questions for me, of course, you can email me. You can hit me on Twitter. Before I go, I want to make sure you know that my opinion on this machine is by far not the only one. I will, if I know of someone who has produced a video about this printer, I will try to link it down in the description. All right, dinner is done, you guys. Let's call it good. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, to get notified of when awesome stuff like this is uploaded. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com and a big thanks to everybody who lets the commercials play at the beginning. That's very kind of you. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.